Okay, it just happens to be Saturday afternoon, June the 21st, 2014, and you know what that is? You know what that means? It is the it's summertime, summertime, pump, pump, summertime, 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 sum, sum, summertime. I hate, I hated that song. I'd rather hear hot fun in the summertime. Hot fun in the summer. Mm. Who is mm. that? Sly in the family? Sly in the family. Hot fun in the and summertime. And I'm going to go home and I'm going to beat my wife. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's the first day of summer. How about that? Yeah. June the 21st, 2000. every year. Happens every year, June the 21st, 2014. Off? Off. Yeah. Oh. oh, I guess you guys forgot. I think so. Oh, that'll reduce some of the noise, aside from the noise we make. Uh, yeah, we might as well inform the audience, please. Oh, uh, there, if you hear any uh, unwanted sounds, it, it simply means that there uh, is construction going on next door, and uh, we apologize for that and uh, well let me formally uh, <laughs> pipe aboard my illustrious co-host and mentor welcome to uncensored hard-hitting truth I'm your host James P Madonna of Mega Life 21 and we are coming to you live and recorded from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. And yes, it is the first day of summer, June 21st. How about that? You know what's strange? The first day of summer is also supposedly the longest day of the year. It is. You would think the longest day of the year would be the middle of summer. No, not so. It's strange how that works. The first day. You would think that the longest day would be in winter. Well, no, the longest, the, the, the shortest day, daylight, when I say day, I mean sun, sunrise to sundown. Yeah, right. that, that would be, no, it's not in winter, actually, no, it's the, uh, it's sometime in, uh, was it October or November? For what, the shortest? Yeah. It, I don't know. <laughs> what do you think I am, some sort of a climatologist or something? Yeah, you're a walking farmer's almanac. But anyway, uh, did I introduce myself? I'm James yeah, P. Madonna. Yeah. Okay, let me let me pipe aboard my co-host with my authentic bosun's whistle. Arr, arr. Welcome aboard our uncensored, hard-hitting truth starship newsletter censored, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Engage. Uh, invigorated? Make it so. Invigorated? Make it so. Why does he have to say make it so? Can he think of anything more elaborate than that? We're talking about the Captain Picard. Captain Picard. Patrick Stewart. Star Trek Generation. Okay. I have really... How can I put this? I have no... Um, special particular article to read, no particular monologue. What? Because we're going to go straight, directly... So much happened this week? ...into these readings. Yes. A lot is happening, has happened, of course, and uh, things will come up as I remember them, or if you start reading the topic, it'll, it'll engage us to, uh, what is it, em embellish? Uh, elaborate? Elaborate. Elaborate on the subject, but uh, I am uh, pissed off mm. that uh, our sh one of our sources uh, that works for us, who is now on suspension without pay for one month, okay, for one month on suspension without pay, for giving me the information that was based on a rumor from an obviously an individual that has no life, a, a pusillanimous pipsqueak weasel that posted last week uh, that comedian Tracy Morgan had his leg amputated, which is not true. He did not lose his leg and I went ahead and said, oh yeah, he lost his leg. Well, that person that works for us 
is on suspension without pay for one month. And rightfully so. Well, Mr. Morgan is in a hospice now. He's, he's well, improving. Well, he's 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 going through physical therapy. But he's got a long way to go. I, I imagine. I mean, you know, uh, uh, and the driver was speeding. The Walmart driver was speeding, and I bet he was speeding because he had to keep up with his schedule. Because or whatever. his because the the scumbag Walton family probably has these truck drivers pressured. To, to keep a deadline schedule and uh, he was in a hurry he would, it was a 45 mile an hour uh, and he speed was, limit. had no sleep for 24 hours there almost. you go so don't 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 crucify just the driver go after the Walton family go after Walmart go because after our business way of doing business I don't care well, I well not not if it kill if it kills innocent people or, or or maims them who cares who cares about somebody else's profit I care about the planet and people well they don't I know they, they don't care about making moolah because they're greedy they're they're wicked you know and uh, this is the this is what we're, what we're, this is what we're up against it's a holy war it's good versus evil it's greed and selfishness and the get way of life versus, versus good and the give way of life. Yeah, yeah. By the way, it's as deeper an, than you think, people. As an aside, you see that green bag there? That is yours. That? Yes. Oh, okay. That is yours. I'll take a look at it when, when you're having lunch later. Fine. Fine. Um, um, I, of course, I did a great show with William H. Morrill III, our uh, voiceover artist, and I want to thank. First, I want to say hello to my uh, close, uh, very dear friend from Osaka, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. And I want to say thank you to my uh, good friend, uh, uh, nutritionist and personal trainer to the stars, Mario Petrus, for uh, doing a great show with me at the uh, Flaming uh, Grill a, a, a Supreme Buffet in East Rutherford, New Jersey on Route 17 South. And we did a show there, one of the best values I've ever been to, and you, you, it's on YouTube, and also on a couple of our Facebook groups. So thank you, Mario Petrus. It was outstanding. It was uh, produced by Mega Life 21, and you got to watch it because we're. This is the first of a new series of buffet critic or restaurant critic shows by Mario and myself, and uh, this one is called. Uh, Best Buffet Bargains, BBB, Best Buffet Best Bargains. Best Buffet Bargains. But we, we will cri critique all food establishments, mm -hmm. either way. This happened to be a positive show, but um, I hope we don't do too many uh, negatives because that means we, we would have to spend money in order to do the negative critique. So I hope... Wait a second. Many, many of them you are You mean to tell me the Flaming Grill is providing the meals? No, no, no. They well, didn't. then what the hell do you care whether they, the goddamn critique is uh, negative or positive? No, no. They, they, did, they, did, not, they did not know okay, we were scheduled to do point. the show. So they should be getting a lot more customers from this video because they, we definitely plug them and uh, rightfully so. So anyway. Aside from that, and the first day of summer, and um, and I also want to uh, wish my good friend and a personal trainer uh, on the West Coast in Southern California, Mr. Rick Brown. He is doing a um, a mace training uh, seminar workshop <laughs> in Cudahy, California, today. So good luck to you, Rick. I hope it goes very well, and. Uh, we, we are involved, of, of course, in alternative training, uh, Indian club, Persian club swinging, and swinging of the mace, and using uh, body ancient body weight calisthenics, like on the Shanna board, uh, things like that. So anyway, let us sink our teeth deeply, our piranha teeth, into these readings, and... Um, uh, there is good news that New York State became the next state to legalize, uh, the newest state to legalize medical marijuana. 
which is uh, which is a step, but you you can't smoke it. Mario Cuomo doesn't want you to be able to smoke it. You know, it can be used otherwise. And well, uh, they just they're just going to put a guy away forever. Yeah, till he croaks. Why? For making marijuana brownies. What state? And selling them. I can imagine. What state? I have no idea. Is it, I bet it's a red state. How? I heard the other day a murderer only got 13 years. Now you figure that out. Murderer gets 13 years. A guy makes marijuana brownies and he's going away for life. Life for a medicinal herb. Now that has to be in the deep south in a red state because that is insane. Like, it like, is insane. Yes. Like William Morrill told me, the, the, the American criminal justice system is totally fucked up. The politics in America and the healthcare system is totally fucked up. And uh, since Nixon, they've been using the prison system to put away blacks. To get them to work for free as, as the new slave labor. And now it's privatized prisons, which were built by corporations, right? Well, of course. Free slave labor. That's better than outsourcing Look to a third world country. How greedy, how miserably wicked and greedy will these CEOs become? America is number 30 on the list of fast internet. Yeah, not Hong get Kong is numero uno. Oh, really? Hong, Hong Kong. Kong. Now, the reason that we are dead last is privatization. Because the private companies have no incentive to go faster. Private companies... They're all making the moolah on they're, us. They're all strictly bottom line profit motivated, so they, they have no interest in putting out a better product innovation, and a more efficient I mean, product. We think, we think Apple is, you know, innovation. Look at all the things that Apple is putting out there and etc. Well, I just remembered by you saying what you said that I should make another salute with my lucky Blackthorn shillelagh from Ireland and that is to the auto company that uh, Tesla that released all of its patents because they care more about the planet than they do about profit. So I salute Tesla. But Governor Christie won't let them in New Jersey to sell. Oh, really? The, 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 Just because the, they don't put up dealerships. Oh, ew, really? Yeah. And dealerships that rip off American consumers. Interesting. Well, you know what? If they had a Tesla dealership, I'll tell you, people would be going crazy over there. There'd be long lines to get in the showroom. I guarantee you, the, what they represent and how great they are, the, how far they can they can travel on a full charge. Uh, I think it's a, what is it, a lithium battery? Lithium based, or I'm not sure. But anyway, I have a feeling it will attract a lot of attention. You know what I mean? And, uh, well, not if it's prevented from, you know, yeah, well, conducting well, business. Well, what I don't like, what I don't approve of is, let's say, if the state or the government slaps uh, extra un unnecessary fees to anything connected to the green movement to sort of punish you for not... There's no such thing as a green for movement. For not sucking America. up to, to, the, to big oil. Okay. There's no such thing. It's all token. So green movement means green as in movement, as in moolah, right? No, it, it don't mean nothing. Well, it's tokenism. It's just a word. It's, no, there's things that are being done, little by little, but it's not any competition to the big boys. They're not the doing... The Koch brothers, So they're not doing what, let's say, they're not doing what, let's say, Germany is doing. That's correct. Where Germany has a goal, as a country, by 2050, to become completely independent from fossil fuels with the real green movement. Yeah, but well, the big companies are now pissed off because 
uh, Germany has uh, all the solar panels and etc. That's and right. And is selling back the electricity to the big boys and everything, and they don't particularly care for that anymore. They have a, an overabundance Correct. of energy. This, the country of Germany, Deutschland, has an overabundance of energy from their green movement, from their solar towers and whatever, you know, uh, maybe wind and so on and so mm -hmm. on. Uh, um, I was talking to Bill Morrow about the hydroelectric buoys that bob up and down mm -hmm. and create electricity. So, so there's an overabundance and the fat cats, big oil, doesn't like it. Oh, no. you know, it's too damn bad. Maybe, maybe the planet and people are more important than their profits. <laughs> Maybe, but I don't think so, because the people in the planet ain't donating to the politicians. There's, nope. only, there's only a certain amount of people who donate, and they're the fat guys. Talking the about the plutocrats. The whores, the oligarchic, oligarchic plutocrats. The oligarchs. Yeah. So the, they're all uh, um, corporate American cocksuckers, basically, That's including good. the media. Well, the media, the media doesn't do anything about it. Now, they, uh, they, speaking of the media, I was very surprised the other day with Megyn Kelly on Fox News, oh. who went after Dick Cheney. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? She's the only one, besides uh, your liberal stations and progressive stations, who call out these Paul Wolfowitz, Dick Cheney, etc., etc., et uh, Paul Bremer. They're the ones who caused the problems in Iraq. And now they're out there trying to tell us what to do wanna, to get back in. They want to get back in because, uh, uh, let me guess, war profiteering, right? Oh, baby. War is big fun. Now, do you see how greed works? You could be you could be a piece of shit scumbag, like, let's say, a Rob Walton. You could be a multi-billionaire, but it's not enough. Never and know. and it's so it's such a, an obsession that they're willing to sacrifice more young American lives, sell souls to achieve this. Yeah. And it's then a shame. it's a shame they will trot out their so-called Christianity. You see, as their front man. Shame, yeah, uh, counterfeit Christians. Shame, 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 in honor of uh, uh, Mr. Sean uh, Morrison, okay, and his uh, girlfriend there, uh, Gina Hollywood, Gina Hollywood, Sean Morrison, I, I salute him too. Hey, it's the first day of summer. Shame, shame, shame on, on these corporatists, these greedy, corrupt corporatists, and, I'm sorry, the corrupt politicians that take the bribes. And let's make sure we continue to call them what they are, bribes. But that, that thing you mentioned before is very shocking and important. The man gets life in prison, I wish we knew what state it was, for making marijuana brownies, but meanwhile a murderer goes on parole after 13 years? Something like that? Well, I don't know if it, you know the story and whether he he might be still behind bars, but he only got 13 years. But he originally got 13 years. Yeah. What whatever you get though, it's never the time you really spend because you go up for parole after yeah. what you know what you know. Good that, behavior. That's just the point. There's a guy in Texas, many a uh, few years ago, who wrote three bad checks and he's doing life. You heard that's what, the three strikes you're out you, rule. You heard, uh, well, they, uh, Texas is a red state and they want slave labor. They want to get, get that workforce up in prison. Jesse Ventura made it simple. He says, uh, I don't believe in the death penalty, but I believe in life in prison without parole. Without parole. Without right. parole. He emphasized that. Without right. any because chance. Because look at what you parole. call it. Uh, the guy who shot at Reagan, he keeps coming up for parole or whatever. Hink Hinkley? Hinkley. In fact, he's out on... Uh, parole. He goes out, uh, like, on uh, the weekends or something. Oh, so he can shoot somebody else famous? Hey, <laughs> he can get the gun. Without a background check. Really? Oh. Yeah. Look, look. Like Antonin Scalia said. 
Well, if you buy the gun and you get the background check and stuff, what's to prevent you from going out in the parking lot and selling it to somebody? Right. That's correct. Well, they want to prevent that, but Mr. Scalia, he wants that to be okay. They can turn around and sell it. And, and guess yeah. what? He wants that to be okay, And guess though. what? The criminals and the thugs will continue to get their firearms through the black market. Yeah. So there's no background check. That's so right. So big deal. So what does gun control 90 do? Ninety percent of people in the United States in a democracy want background checks. But what is, that's but the not, politicians and NRA do not. That's not going to stop the thugs from getting it illegally. Well, they will still get it. One problem at a time, please. But it's it's connected. We want to prevent the nuts from getting guns first. Seventy-four killings in schools and etc. You think that, since hey since, buddy boy since uh, uh, the one in Connecticut. You think the nuts can't find a, a, an illegal source of firearms to, to sell them a gun? Maybe they can, but one thing at a time. Why one thing at a time? Because the if you put all these things. Uh, it ain't gonna happen. You can't even get one thing done at a time right now. That's as far as gun control is concerned. That's because a lot of uh, anything that is for the good of the country that's and the correct. people falls on deaf ears in Washington. Because it's not a democracy. It's a plutocrat. It's not it's that oligarchs. It's not us. that the le the right wing is uh, deaf or s too stupid to understand. Is they choose to be in inactive. That's concerning these matters, they have these to issues. Be. That's where they get their money. Yeah. I have a quote in the new article, in the okay. newsletter. Something to the effect, paraphrasing, uh, if you have a financial interest in something, it's going to determine how you think. Yeah, what, what is that amendment I, I read about uh, that they're trying to pass that's going to uh, somehow take the money out of politics. It, it sounds good. Ain't going nowhere. It sounds good. Ain't going nowhere. <laughs> How is it going to go anywhere? <laughs> I don't. I, I, it's, it sounds like magical to me because it sounds I, like myth making. You know. All what, right. what is the politicians going to cut off their noses to spite their faces? I don't think so. I don't think so. If they're corrupt and they're on the take, are they going to stop being on the take? Exactly. And give up their lavish lifestyle, uh, working only so... Uh, working their socialistic style la li lifestyle, you mean? Working several days a month and going on vacation for the rest of the month, congressman. And getting free health care? Yeah. But they don't want you to have free health care. That's no good. No. Not good at all. Well, a Republican um, that uh, is all f is all for fracking uh, mm. uh, made sure that uh, they're not that, that, that they they can't frack near his home. CEO, he put yeah. a stop. He put a stop to. Uh, well, he knows it's bad, the, doesn't the, he? The fracking in his region. He put a stop to that. But he doesn't want you to know that it's bad. But, correct. But anywhere else. Fracking, like if it involves the we the people, then it's okay. Holy frack! Yeah. Frack, 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 drill, drill, drill. There you go. A federal appeals court says a Los Angeles law that bars people from living in parked vehicles is unconstitutional. The Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. Where are you ruled supposed to live? On Thursday, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, that the 1983 law was vaguely written and discriminates against homeless and poor people. Well, yeah, I mean, you, 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 if you're homeless and uh, nine times out of ten, it's not any fault of your own, you know, uh, and you seek shelter. And you're looking for shelter. You look if you happen to happen to have a car. You seek shelter. If you happen to have a, a tent and the person lets you use their ground, you go in a tent. Now, if they keep on saying, oh, you can't, oh, you can't, you can't, you can't sleep on a park bench, we're, we're going to arrest you. You can't sleep uh, in, a, in a cardboard box. On a bridge. Huh? Bikes. What? 
spikes for the homeless so yeah. they can't sleep under the bridge. Yeah, well, in London, England, they, yeah. they have spikes now that pop up um, um, on park benches, uh, I guess, at, at sundown when mm -hmm. the park closes, and, uh, and spikes in alcoves, and yeah, so they prevent the homeless. They want, to, they want the homeless to Disappear. simply go away. That's right. Disappear. That's right. I don't know where they're going to disappear to. I don't know. Look what they did in Lakewood. I assume I heard something to the effect that some of those people got placed somewhere. I'm not sure. I don't know. So if, if for a year only though. So if you're homeless, oh, so they're going to be like uh, nomads. They're going to be traveling. So if you're homeless, um, uh, you can't. Uh, be outside. Yeah. You cannot live anywhere outside mm. because heaven forbid the United States of America, you know, public land belongs to the people. You know, they want to privatize all the land. Oh, you can't be in the woods. You're evicted. Oh, you can't be sleep, sleep in an alcove now. Can't You're kill out. the you, king's deer. You, you can't sleep on a park bench. You're out. The king's, yeah, like uh, the sheriff of Nottingham, whatever. Uh, you can't hunt in the king's forest and hunt the king's deer. Mm -hmm. Everything is privatized. They, we own it all. Pal. They did that in Ireland too with the people. Yeah. You know the monarchy. Did it all over. You know, monarchy every, owned everything. Everything belonged to the king. Divine right of kings. God put them in control. Because they say so. That's correct. Just like the popes in the past. That's correct. The, felt that they represented uh, God because they said so. That's correct. And then Martin Luther came and proved them wrong. He didn't prove anything. What did he do? Just uh, point, pointed up some mistakes. Some mistakes. It caused the Reformation. Right. Protestants came into being. Well, but we, whether he proved anything or not. Well, when you what? when you accurately prove somebody, you got another, you got another group. When you accurate accurately prove somebody wrong by what's in the Bible. They're still there. That's proof. They're still there. What's still there? The Roman Catholic Church. Of course, because they're... Well, they, then where did he prove anything? Well, the Reformation showed that the Roman Catholic Church were making up their own rules. And, and what laws. happened? Nothing happened. Exactly. And what happened was a new group formed. Right, Protestants. That's all. Protestants. And then but it didn't do anything to the original group. And then probably later on, some Protestants decided to make up their own rules. And that's why we have, you know, evangel evangelic sects. evangelical nuts today, and so on and so on. And, and you know, and, and Mormons that have their the Book of Mormon, and so on and so forth. There's like two thousand different Christian sects. The Baptists that dance with with poisonous snakes. <laughs> Taking up serpents and the guy's wig, he got a live uh, rattlesnakes in his hand, and you know, and they bite somebody. And I think one of the well, past they won't bite you if you have faith. If you have faith, the if you have faith, the poison won't won't affect you. Yeah, that's, that's why the guy's wife, the pastor's <laughs> wife, died from the snake bite. Yeah. So anyway, you prove you you listen. If it wasn't for Martin Luther, would uh people like David C. Pack and Herbert W. Armstrong have an opportunity to do what they did if it wasn't for somebody like Martin Luther to, you know, to make, to, to show awareness that the Catholic Church was making up their own laws. It only went so far. A new group was formed, that's all. When you say group, you mean organized religion? Yeah. Exactly. And that spells trouble. Exactly. Well, like, it's, tr it's trouble right now in, in Iraq. You got the Sunnis and the Shiites. The Sunnis versus the Shiites. Now, yeah. this, is a th this is a civil war. This should, have, uh, this should have let them do it. We had our civil war. Yeah. Okay. So what the hell do we have to do, uh, even though we caused all this uh, yeah. shenanigans and everything? So the, but they got to have this war amongst themselves to find out who's going to control the country. So the Sunnis represent radical Islam? No, basically. they were the ones in charge when Mr. Saddam Hussein was in charge. Right. The Sunni. Because he was a Sunni. Yeah. So they were 
knocked out with the the new government, Maliki. Yeah. So now they're pissed off. So they're now they're gonna join join with ISIS. You know what I mean? To get back their power. Hey, you gotta have goes on and on. You gotta have a civil war now and then if you got these kind of problems within your country. Because sometimes when the tumor gets too big uh, to to deal with, you have to cut, cut it, it out. out. You gotta manually go cut after it. it. Out. It's cut it out. Uh, hey, organized religion groups become corrupt, just like political parties have become corrupt. Mm -hmm. You have parties, groups, money sneaks its way in there. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, let, let us sink our teeth. Speaking of the Pope, how about that? How about that? Pope Prince Francis. Oh, I like Pope Francis. I, 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 tons of people do. Condemned the legalization of drugs. Oh, now he's changing his mind? He condemned it? That's as a flawed and failed experiment, as he lent his voice on Friday to a debate, raging from the United States to Uruguay. But that's how you take it off the black market. Pope Francis said at a Rome drug enforcement conference that even limited steps to legalize recreational drugs are not only highly questionable, but they fail to produce the desired effects. Quote, let me state this in the clearest terms possible, he said. The problem of drug use is not solved with drugs. Drug addiction is an evil, and with evil there can be no yielding or compromise. Yeah, I wish uh, many Democrats uh, in the United States learned from that statement compromising with evil. Bipartisanship, that doesn't work, that won't work. Well, what about Amsterdam? What about the Netherlands? Uh, how, how are they doing with crime since they have a legalization of many drugs? Are they doing okay? We don't look at other countries to find ways of doing things better. I mean, to keep it illegal was done, has been done for Decades. That's correct. And it, it hasn't worked. And it hasn't worked. So it is a medical problem. Hope he's wrong. Addiction is a medical problem, not a legal one. Well, people you put him in jail. What do you got? Slave labor. Slave labor. Yeah. People um, turn to uh, dabble in drugs and addictions because something's seriously wrong in with their, their own life. home yes. life, their family life. I saw a video last night of things are lacking Facebook. Yeah. And it 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 said that the, it showed a, a black man, a, he looked confused and ba 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 ba. And then there was this skinny girl dancing around, going nuts and etc. and they said she was on crack. Maybe. She looked like a fool. So well, this is what well, they this, are fools. Exactly, but this is what this stuff does, and what the I mean, what do they expect to sit in a corner somewhere and have their hallucinations? I mean, when you're taking a drug, you are <clears throat> you are giving control over to the drug and other people because so, they will have to help you in some way. So if you have an addiction, making it legal, you feel, will not make the addiction go away. Not immediately. Not immediately. No, the, the acquisition of the drug will be easy Easier. and cheap. Or, well, you just mentioned Amsterdam. I said they allow you to have your drug in a certain place where you don't cause problems and etc. etc. Yeah, like you got clean needles and ba 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 boom. Yeah. Like here they got cigar cigar parlors, you know, where people go and smoke the hookah and the cigar. Well in oh, Amsterdam the hookah is very bad, man. The, the hookah you know it's water filtered my friend. It's very water filtered. bad. It's much more dangerous than cigarettes. Even though it's filtered through water? 
doesn't matter. But the point is, in Amsterdam, they have these indoor uh, designated We used to have in this country opium dens. There you go. You know, before the uh, religious nuts went on a tirade. That came from China, probably. From yeah, Asia. the Chinese brought it the over. The opium here. den. Yeah. And that's why the, how they make heroin. Seems to me, I saw in a paper the other day, that they have a new thing which they spray in the nostrils or put it in the nostrils for her heroin when they get an overdose. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, the same right-wing religious nuts that uh, created prohibition are the same ones that put out reefer madness and want to keep our, in New Jersey, the Rockefeller drug laws, where the judges have no... They are... They have mandatory laws. The judges have no discretion to say, well, in this case, like, uh, oh, yeah, well, he's got the, he's got marijuana brownies here. You know, he's not the, the, the uh, ah, we ain't going to get him a life of uh, yeah, six months in community service. They don't have that discretion anymore. The mandatory laws, they have to obey. Because they want to cram in that slave labor yeah. into privatized prisons. Yeah. So corporations can get slave labor, yeah. which is cheaper than outsourcing to China or Bangladesh. Th this is how wicked the greed of uh, conservatism is, you know, but, but you got those stupid brain-dead uh, 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 lemmings out there in the red states. The, the cultist evangelical uh, rednecks out there, the teabaggers that, you know, yeah. they just don't have the mentality to re do their own research and uh, well, it doesn't take be an independent free thinker, you know. It takes less than half a brain to understand that uh, if our corporations and etc. are going to build infrastructure and this that they invest in China and etc. We're not doing it here. We're robbing our people mm -hmm. of jobs, of infrastructure, of whatever. But that's what's happened. That's what's happened and therein lies the problem. Why Detroit is bankrupt and etc. All due to the fact that the corporations and the rich are not paying their fair share of taxes and have not in the last 30 some years, and we are subsidizing other countries and their economy. Yeah. Okay? There's the problem. Salt! Hey, uh, um, uh, General Electric. Boeing, you know, these companies uh, like that haven't paid any federal income taxes mm -hmm. and, and and their profits have been going through the roof since, uh, I think, since uh, for 2008 until, until now, I believe. Uh, Not until now. Since the 80s. Since the 80s, huh? Yeah. 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 I, mean, the, I mean, just think about it, you know. Uh, astronomical profits and they haven't paid look a dime in federal income taxes the economy even our flawed capitalistic economy depends on one thing it depends on the dollar going round and round and round and round and round mm -hmm. well if you ain't got no dollars going round and round and round you ain't got no economy right and that's what has happened here we the corporations are spending the money in other countries they're holding it overseas so they don't have to come back here and pay taxes on it. Blah, 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 blah. The dollar ain't going round and round and round and round. Well, the way you fight that sneaky, uh, slithering uh, 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 maneuver is you tariff the hell out of their product when they bring it back into the United or States. Or make a regulation that they can't do it in the first place. Right, like other countries keep their economy in their country, like Japan, right? Oh, but we want free trade. We want a, a free trade so that we can buy bananas from 800 countries. 
the hell do we need that bananas from 800 countries for? Didn't Bill Clinton uh, participate in making this happen? I believe it was called NAFTA. And I believe that hundreds of thousands of people are rushing over the Mexican border with children and etc. right now. And well, if NAFTA was supposed to help Mexico, and Canada and the United States. Why are they coming over here? Yeah, and, and babies on the way, too. Anchor babies. Right. Yeah. But the trouble is, I mean, it was supposed to help the Mexican economy. So they wouldn't have to come over here. They'd have jobs over there. But they're pouring over the border. So I guess the brilliant idea of NAFTA it's a failure. NAFTA another, was a failure. Another, it robs our jobs. Another failure. I think I think it was just part of the whole outsourcing plan. You know, it's uh, or get it cheaper somewhere else. And yeah, it, it, it's 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 actually cutting the life blood, the jugular vein of the United States. Correct. All of those trade. Yeah. Those trade, uh, uh, look at the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, okay, same thing, it's all about the corporations wanting total sovereignty over countries. The countries have no say in what their corporations want to do, and they put that in the law of those trade agreements. You see what happened with Canada? and that additive in the gas or something that they didn't want. Well, they had to pay that company the, the uh, estimated profits they would lose because of the denial of allowing their product into the gasoline or whatever. That's what they do. Look, if a company has to take a subsidy, the company's not doing well and should not be in business. But we pay ExxonMobil subsidies every stinking year. I hear $93 billion a year go out in corporate welfare. Probably more than that. Probably more. Look, what, food look, stamps for veterans? Oh, that's what, bad. What the hell do you call the Pentagon? That's all corporate welfare. For the private contractors. Yeah. For things we don't need or things we don't want. Okay, let's sink your teeth into the readings. Now the airways are being flooded with the likes of former Vice President Dick Cheney. Yeah, he's in the spotlight now. Journalist Bill Crystal and other so-called neocons giving opinions on what to do in Iraq and how the problems are all the president's fault. These are the same people who told us about how weapons of mass destruction in Iraq would lead to a mushroom cloud. They told us a war would be fast and cheap. <laughs> that we would be welcomed as liberators. From what? And that there would be no problems between the Shiites and the Sunnis despite centuries of strife between the two. These are also the same people who diverted attention from getting Osama bin Laden in Afghanistan to a needless war in Iraq that cost 45,000 lives, millions of lives of Iraqis, and treasure and that removed the only government that created a balance against the Iranians. You really think the United States cares about the Shiites and the Sunnis? Obviously not. <laughs> or they didn't know about that. Well, there's an underlying reason why they're going Because as you going can back well, in aware, there. Are well aware and know, uh, conservatives lack abilities to know certain things. They only deal with ideology. 
They don't know because they don't pursue knowledge. They have it already. It's in their ideology. Okay? Our soldiers were sent to war without properly armored vehicles or body armor. I honestly haven't a clue as to what we should do in Iraq, but I do know that these people have not earned the right to tell us. It is absurd that the networks are giving them so much airtime when they were wrong about everything related to Iraq. And as I said, Megyn Kelly gave it to Mr. Cheney the other day, but Mr. Cheney said it was all Obama's fault. It was Obama's fault even when Bush and Cheney were in charge? That's correct. And the, well, hey, hey, they've been very successful at stating that the economy is Obama's fault. Yeah. How, did, how, how was the damage done? By, 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 by the Bush-Cheney administration. And, he, and Obama down. inherited That's it. That's correct. That's correct. But they've been very successful. Hey. Lying. They've been very successful at having the red state people join them that is the plutocrats, the oligarchs, in their fight against taxation. Yeah, that's why they see they, they pity mistake, the billionaire. That's why they mistakenly uh, call themselves the Tea Party, because the actual Tea Party incident was against imperialism of King George of England, taxation without representation. Mm -hmm. Right. In their case, they're trying to make themselves look like the good guys. Like, you know, the little catchphrases that Republicans use, like the Clean Air Act, yeah. you know, the Tea Party, to make themselves look like they're the good guys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, when in fact, they're, they're, they're the forces of evil. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, the progressives are the true good guys. As the God Project, Project says again, this issue, anybody who tries to cut food stamps, Social Security and etc. is an evil person, a devil. Yeah. Yet Paul Ryan and the bunch keep trying to do it. He who takes away from the poor uh, to increase his wealth, uh, he who gives to the rich shall surely come to want. Well, Dwight David Eisenhower president said it back in the 50s, 54 I believe. He said that people who would try to do away with Social Security, unemployment insurance, <laughs> etc, 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 are stupid. Well I got news for Mr. Eisenhower. His party changed in the interim and these stupid people have won the day. Haven't they? Well, the CEO of Costco made a very intelligent statement. He knew that the more money you put in the <coughs> pocket of the mainstream, the more they put m m money into the economy. I told you, the dollar goes around and around and around and around. Yeah, gets passed on. If you on. prevent the dollar from going around, the economy goes down. The circulation... In order for uh, the economy to work in the United States, you must have optimum circulation of the revenue. The uh, rich of the, the revenue. corporations yeah. do not spend. No. They don't spend. So if the two-thirds consumers, which depend, the, the economy depends on, do not spend, the economy goes down the drain. That's true. Very true. Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker. I heard prosecutor went after his ass. 
a potential 2016 Republican presidential uh, uh, candidate, uh, heaven help us all, took part in a nationwide criminal scheme to coordinate fundraising with conservative groups. Prosecutors said in court documents unsealed on Thursday. No charges have been filed against Walker or any member of his staff. And both sides are arguing in court over whether the activities are covered by election laws. Oh, that figures no charges have been, have been uh, made. The documents for the first time put Walker himself at the center of an investigation into campaigns in 2011 and 2012. The papers were filed in December as part of an investigation into fundraising involving Walker and his campaign, the Wisconsin Club for Growth. Whose growth? <laughs> not, is. The, not, the people is. Of, not the people of Wisconsin. <laughs> 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 the State Chamber of Commerce and other groups. The investigation began in 2012 as Walker, who rose to fame by passing a bill that effectively ended collective bargaining for most public workers, was facing a recall election. But the probe has been on hold since May when a federal judge ruled it was a breach of Wisconsin Club for Growth's freedom speech rights. <laughs> Can we all say that that particular judge owes something to Mr. Walker? Yeah. I hear the same prosecutor is next going to uh, go after Chris Christie, which is... Yes, they are, uh, they are getting closer. The noose is beginning to tighten. Which is... Well, outstanding news to me. State prosecutors said in the December filing that Walker, former Chief of Staff Keith Gilkes, top advisor R.J. Johnson, and campaign operative Deborah Jordahl discussed illegal fundraising and coordination with national political groups and prominent Republican figures, including GOP strategist Karl Rove. Eh. The scope of the criminal scheme under investigation is expansive. Lead prosecutor Francis Schmitz wrote in December court filing objecting to an attempt by Walker's campaign and other conservative groups to quash subpoenas. It includes criminal violations of multiple election laws, including filing false campaign finance reports. Walker suggested that the documents mean little or nothing, given that his campaign's position has already prevailed twice in the court. I'm not asking people to take my word for it, or political allies, the governor said. I'm saying look at two independent judges at both the state and federal level, who did not buy those arguments and were rather aggressive in telling those folks to stop proceeding with that because they didn't think it was right. The uproar over the collective bargaining law led to the recall, which Walker won, making him the first governor in United States history to ever defeat a recall. The evidence shows an extensive coordination scheme that pervaded nearly every aspect of the campaign activities during 2011 elections that decided control of the state senate 
and the 2012 recall election. Under Wisconsin law, third party political groups are allowed to work together on campaign activity, but are barred from coordinating that work with candidates. Hmm. Outstanding. So, outstanding. theoretically, as the law is stated, Walker's guilty. I don't care how many judges. Couldn't happen said it was to, okay. uh, to a better demon. That's for sure. And next, next the, the, the obese demon. Chris, Crispy, Cream, Crisco, Christie. Uh, we're on the road. We're on, on the, the road. road. All goes well? Well, you know, uh, it might be impeached. Or karma. Not caramel. Karma. Karma is a. Uh, karma does not always work. There are many people alive. Did any you say Oliver North? Judith Miller as another. Bush Cheney. Bush Cheney. They didn't get their karma. And in fact, I saw something last night somewhere which uh, involved uh, that there some somebody is trying to get them on prim, uh, war war crimes, but they're trying to uh, get rid of it. Well, but Bush and Cheney. European countries. No, they the tried that already, and Obama, Obama didn't go for it. Spain, I believe it was. Wanted to get them in the world court. Oh boy, yeah. Obama didn't go for it. Yeah. It goes at making nice, nice, compromising bullshit with the Republicans, making nice, nice with you them. You saw what you put up there on Facebook last night, did you not? About, I'm for universal health care. But when it came to doing it, it was not universal, was it? It was the Affordable Care Act. Yeah, and some... And a so, private situation. And some right-winger on uh, that guy's uh, pig from... I think he's from... He might be from Kentucky. But anyway, a couple a couple of people that sounded like right-wing trolls, they, they told me that I don't understand how economy... How the works, world works. How the, how the world and the country works and how econi economics works. I, I know nothing about economics. All I know is the capitalistic system is flawed. So it doesn't work well. And it certainly does not work for the people. It works for a minority at the top. Well, I, I mentioned... That's all you need to know. I mentioned to these two jabronis uh, uh, the fact that Cutting taxes on the on the wealthy and and corporations, of course, does not create jobs in the United Has it States. Yet? Huh? Has it worked yet in the United States? No, they they either run. No, 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 it never worked. Thank you. Thank never you. Never worked. Privatization never worked. Thank you. You know, and uh, of course they eventually stop commenting because they eventually run out of things to say to rebuttal me, which. It's true. Where are the jobs? Show me the jobs. They're not here. The jobs are created by demand. Where there's a demand, the company will put out the product if it has the people working for it. If it's and the people will buy it, and then it will create jobs. If, it's, if the demand is in the same country that you live in. That you're yeah. dealing with. But if they're being made somewhere else, right. you know, then the jobs aren't going to be created here. Correct. Bingo. Bingo. It's not How we're doing? Not, no, it's not. It's not. It's Two not minutes. Two minutes. It's not rocket science. All right. Exactly. It's not rocket science. Yeah, I mean, running society is really a lot less complex than people think. Really is. It's common sense. Most of life is common sense. Yeah, but you got money who sticks its big fat stinking nose into things well, and complicates that, that's things. That's what we call corruption. But it complicates things. That's Beelzebub doing that. Anyway, if you have that belief, if you have that belief, otherwise it's human beings allowing other human beings to have advantage over them. 
it, it's, that is by making laws yeah. that are deregulated. Listen, if you're an atheist uh, shrink, uh, then you won't believe in Beelzebub. You'll, you'll believe in the frailties of uh, human nature and you'll call them sociopaths and, mm -hmm. and uh, we, they have to be examined and researched and all this crap. Anyway, uh, they need oxyto oxytocin. Oxo oxytocin. Oxytocin. Yeah. Oxytocin. It is now time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch. And I will next join our voiceover artist, William H. Morrow III, to do our show. And, um, and then followed by our promo. And then back to the balance of this show on the first day of summer 2014. I stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Yeah. In your in your in your hookah. Stick you that go. in your hookah and smoke it. <laughs> oh man. The lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer. Da -da -da. What is it? Hot hot dogs and pretzels and beer? And there you go. So something like that, the words of the song. Okay, I'm here with William H. Morrow the third. You know, I, I didn't really, I didn't know that um, Terry Bradshaw was a guest on the on the new Larry King show on Aura TV on uh, on the internet, and they both come to the conclusion that the Washington Redskins should immediately drop the name. I don't agree with that at all. Well, it is it is tradition. 80 plus years. And I don't think anybody... Do you think the Redskins in the beginning, I mean, let's call ourselves the Redskins, so we can put down and make fun of the American Indian. It's an honor. It's not to make fun or disgrace or any way hurt these people. Come off of it. We, we've got... I, I don't think the fans of the Washington Redskins, or, or even outside non-fans, I don't like the Redskins. I'm not a Redskins. Are fan. thinking disparagingly? I'm not a Redskins fan. To me, it's respecting the American Indian. Well, I, I think this is ridiculous. I, We're I thin skinness too far. It's got to yeah. stop. I mean, I'm I'm always defending uh, indigenous people all over the world and the Native Americans, and I'm 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 always. Uh, at, so what are they going for next? I'm week? always empathetic and, and compassionate towards their causes. When does this end, Jerry? Next will be I the Atlanta know. Braves, Florida State Seminoles. What's next? What's next? When does it end? Washington Redskins. This is ridiculous. The Audubon Society will say the Baltimore Orioles can't because use it. Because now the, now the bird we're making, we're disrespectful towards the birds. Where does this end? But I understand the the term when they when they chose the nickname 80 years ago. I understand how things were back then. But do you think they chose the name initially as their team's name and logo to disrespect the Indian? Do you think they said, let's make fun of the American Indian, we'll call ourselves the Redskins? If anything, they're going out of their way to respect the American Indian back then, possibly when the majority or a lot of people did not. They gave them credibility. They gave them a pro team's name. I, I agree with you. I don't so think I don't get this. I don't think there was any Wait, negative. Let me interrupt. You said Bradshaw and Larry King. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, they're, they're just riding the bag wagon of uh, the negativity. Then I don't. I don't agree with them one bit. No, no. Yeah, no. I mean it's. Um, so why doesn't Terry Bradshaw go against the Steelers and say they're uh, they're putting down the, the Steel Workers Union? No, well he'll say he'll say they're honoring the Steel Workers Union. Well, probably. What do you think the Redskins are doing? The Colts. You going to have the Equine Society calling because we're detrimental to the horse industry or whatever. Uh, where does it end? But I'm sure. I have a feeling that Paul Paul Dean really is. I have a gut feeling she's not a racist. I, I think. Oh, I do too. I, I think. Too. I think. I you know. I think she just grew up in a in a time and in a, in a region of the United she States where. The word. Have I ever? Okay, I don't believe in being afraid and saying these, and I will say the word. And not, not out of shame. I disrespect no one, as you know. You've known me thirty plus almost forty years. But when people get pissed off, they everybody has things. racism. The blacks call themselves niggers. 
Let's be honest, people. Well, Let's they stop it right now. Well, th there's a tremendous amount of Caucasian uh, uh, reverse cor discrimination against Caucasians. I mean, you know, uh, I can care less what you call me. Right? The you blacks know. call us woodpeckers or whatever it is, and, and, and crackers or I just don't care. And that doesn't bother me at least. I bit. don't. No. I don't hate anybody. Uh, I'm nothing skinned. When people get pissed, they do use they out of anger. Oh, you do. They do use ra a race How many racial times terms. Angry, sometimes you might say, "I'm going to kill you." You don't really mean you're going to commit murder. Yeah. It's you say things out of anger. And sometimes you use some conversation, yeah. like we're doing. If I say the word nigger, it doesn't mean I, I'm anti-black. All the teams I played for, easily we were 50 plus percent black. Or am I being wrong now by saying black? Should I say Afro-American? I don't know. Uh, it doesn't matter. Well, there's an they were some of my best the, best friends were the blacks the, and the whites. We had some some Hispanics on our teams. Well, the, the people of you North know. of North Africa are of Arabic descent. They're yeah, Arabic. One's from all has a background yeah. of ethnicity. Uh, you know, South Africa is this Dutch uh, colonists. What is it? Johannesburg. Well, Johannesburg is a Dutch even name. Even aside from ethnicities, it used to be you were known as retarded. You can't say that anymore. Now it's not even mentally. I mentally think challenged. Can, well, I think you can still say that, but I think it's mentally handicapped or mentally challenged. Mentally challenged. When will this stop? So what's next? Obese people are horizontally uh, uh, challenged? You can't call little people dwarfs or midgets. Vertically or, challenged. They're, they're little people. Little people, right. Let's stop this. Number one, why are we doing this? Number two, why are we allowing it to happen? Walking on eggshells. It's, it's still good. You know what's you know what's peculiar? Everybody suddenly uh, has a bleeding heart, and they suddenly care, well, I do a, care. about people. You do too. No, no, no I'm but not I talking about heart you. Too. No, I'm but talking. Why, why are we so ripping everything apart that you can't open your mouth anymore? No, I'm talking about like societal, like no. like. They did an experiment. I mean, this shows you how much people really care. In India, they took a man, well dressed. He did, he didn't look like he was homeless or a bum, and they put fake blood on him and he went out in the streets and it was he was asking pedestrians for help and he happened to be like not too far from a hospital no one stopped to speak to him no one stopped to help him no one stopped to call 911 or whatever they do in India nobody cared well that's not just India that, that, that happens here they did that in New York City that as an experiment here. nobody the homeless are invisible that's the sadness and the sickness of the human being so in a way they show they make a big stink like they care about people like with the Washington Redskins but in reality when people are in trouble when they need help People don't care. I don't have time. I don't. I don't want to get involved. I don't have time. Get involved. It's a fellow human being. All they have to do is call nine one one. What's wrong? What's wrong? Right. Right. Who? What happened? Did you get stabbed? What happened? Nobody stopped. Nobody kissed. In New York City too. Uh, somebody was no, lying on. I remember what I told you a few weeks ago? Lying back on the sidewalk. They set, set family members up. Do you remember? Uh, well, refresh my memory a little they bit. They set family members up to dress and be dirty and sit there, push over the street, and it's homeless people. And they watch their own family members walk by and ignore them. And when the guy, Mom? He goes, she said, you failed. You walk right by your own family members because they were dressed or looked homeless or right. destitute, what have you. A pastor did this as an experiment. Uh, as, as he an dressed like a homeless man. Uh, and nobody paid attention. And and his parishioners ignored treated him like crap, like were rude to him, ignored parishioners. him. Parishioners. Supposedly religion, you'd understand right. and want to help and these people hide behind this veil of religion. He just gave a sermon, and, uh -huh. he, and then and he went went out dressed as a homeless. Nobody paid attention to him. And he tore into them the next time they came uh, yeah. to church. And who made a peep in church? They had nothing to say, did they? Nope. Good. It's called being a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. Yeah. Thank you. You're a hypocrite. You're you're an absolute idiot, a moronic fool, hiding right. behind the veil of of religion. Right. You go to preach. Number two, I've asked a lot of people in the past with certain things they've done, and oh, it drives them nuts when I say this. I said, do you believe in God? No. And whether I do or not doesn't matter. Let's say they but said yes. They say yes. Do you think your God is proud of you right now? 
Oh, I'd say absolutely boy, they not. Get real quiet fast. No, it, it, it's according you think to. He's proud of a, you, right? Now. According to the Bible, he's not only not uh-huh. proud. He's ashamed, and of he how you behave and act with your fellow human being. No, in, or not just human being, yeah. animal or living being. Let's in, be in, fair. In the book of Genesis, where it says, where it's listed, where God was speaking, he actually said that the creating the human race was a mistake, because there's nothing but wickedness and disappointment. And uh, well, throughout history, you've got to look at your crimes too. It seems to be everything is snowballing and getting worse. Absolutely. As we, as we go along and progress, we have we discussed this before. We should learn from history. It seems like we haven't learned a thing. Uh, we're just getting worse. We're mistreating each other more and more. Now, now we're too busy to take care of one another, or help each other. It's sad. Now, Paul Ryan of uh, uh, this is from Washington of uh, state of uh, Wisconsin. He made a statement recently <coughs> comparing uh, the poor to stray cats. He says if the poor are like stray cats. If you feed them, we'll never get rid of them. Now, isn't that dehumanizing? Well, what's he saying? How do we get rid of you want to get rid of them? He used the term get rid you of them. You want to get rid of them? How would you like to get rid of them? Meaning if they you were... stop feeding them, are you saying let them starve to death? Is that what man is all about? Letting his own people starve to death? Well, Senator Ryan, I think you've lost a lot of votes with that statement. I think you're an absolute... And, uh, oh, people are very upset you know, with maybe him making that statement. Maybe for Mark Cho for me saying this, I yeah. think he's an absolute moron for saying something like that. Well, his own political career and, and, oh, and career. As, as a human. Kiss your career goodbye, making that kind of a statement. How can you support somebody that wants to let the poor die? So he's dehumanizing people. They're nothing. In other words, according to Republican Paul Ryan, if you're poor... <laughs> you don't have money, I don't need you. You're not worth it. You, you're, your you're humanity worthless. Is, is worthless. What value do you put on a life? You, Jimmy, my me, or anybody else. What's what inside? What's you? inside the person? Yeah. The heart. How you do? You the character, uh, uh, heart, character, personality. I know a lot of people that have a lot of money, and they're very poor. A lot of people. I know people without a lot of money. They're very wealthy. Why? Family, friends, the important thing. Oh, they're wonderful. They're human. wonderful human yeah. beings. Does money make you great? What if you lost everything in a bad investment and also became broke? Are you now worthless? Bill Gates, for example, are you not worthless? I mean, that would not happen. But I'm using no, that as an he's example. Still, he's still the same. He still has the same mind. Good philanthropic man. But he's still. And would that make him worthless because he also has billions? There are people who are flat broke who have impressive resumes and, and college degrees and are the same people they were before. What price do you put on life? And who are you to put a price on anybody's life? To pass judgment who like you? that. Anybody. I don't mean just you. You, anybody out there listening, who are you? What price do you put on life? How do you value your life? Right. What, what gives value to a life? Well, it, well, it sh- definitely shouldn't be paper, a monetary uh, uh, possession. Yeah. yeah, a dollar sign in front of it. Hey, here's an immigrant crossing the Rio Grande, sinking into America. He's worthless. Kill him. Let him die. Yeah. Well, homeless people are just... They, they, one guy w- uh, was attacked and stabbed, but they didn't know it. it was, a homeless man was lying in this, on a sidewalk. Oh, people just so much. People so just much. stepped over it. They just so stepped much. over it. You can't do that. You can't well, do that. Well, look, uh, animals, uh, abandoned animals, and you know, same deal. But you look at the human cruelty. being in overall, we're, we're pretty sick species. We're not so civilized. We like to think we're civilized. We're pretty sick. We're pretty sad. I mean, uh, I mean, with all the with all the food that's available. Well, that's why diminishing. why does China need to round up dogs and cats, cram them into a steel crate? So they can't move and and kill them for food and you know, fur. You know, for what you just said, we're so we're supposed to quote we're trying to feed everybody's minds that we're civilized as a society. And we're very very primitive. Now, now th- what I just told we're you is true. Sad. I saw I, know, I saw the I photograph. Know, I know, and I, I saw I'd the photograph. Not talk too much about that because that to me is very disturbing. It is very disturbing. I love animals, as you know. I love an animal right. not. and uh, but, no, uh, I, I don't go for this stuff. Yeah. My friend Russell. Yeah, Russell's here. Hey, hey, all right, let me read this. And uh, it definitely is the human race is a despicable, cruel species. Um, all right, this is a statement recently made by um, Senator um, 
Barry Sanders of uh, Vermont. Um, over the past uh, five years, General Electric, Boeing, and Verizon paid nothing in federal income taxes, even though they made $78 billion in profits combined since the year 2008. We cannot allow that to continue. Now, that's, that's borderline traitorous and unpatriotic and anti-American. But if you're a few hundred dollars short or less on your taxes, they'll come after you. If you're if you if you're a lesser if you're a lesser person, why are you worth less? They'll in this corporation? they'll audit you and they'll throw you in prison. Why are you worth worthless or worth less? Yeah. Martha What's Stewart. Martha Stewart was oh, thrown in jail. Was, that was a joke. So they used was, her as a scapegoat and as an example for forty thousand dollars. That was wrong. For forty thousand know, dollars. What she did was absolutely nothing. Come on, people. Let's stop this. It's got to stop. You know, really. Bernie, I'm sorry, Bernie Sanders. Did I say Barry? You said Barry, and I was like saying you. Did he retire from the Lions and go into politics? No, that, I that's didn't a, want to interrupt you. Yeah, so that, no, I'm I, sorry, I'm sorry, Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders, okay. Not Barry. Ba Barry Sanders was was a, was a football player. Phenomenal running back. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Good thing I I, yes. I, I, I said it again. Uh, very high esteem, very compassionate, um, um, extremely compassionate, independent senator from uh, Vermont. Bernie, San Bernie Sanders. Now, this is, happens to be true. I mean, you might as well call them the top 1% or the top 10%. They're, they're getting away <laughs> scot-free with paying their fair share in, uh, in taxes. In this case, no taxes. Well, I'd like to know why aren't they paying taxes? Well, I, I could answer that simply that I think they're just paying off uh, people well, in Washington. Why isn't that illegal? Doesn't that... Isn't that worse or uh, kind of even with insider trading or what have you? I mean, it's what, this is corrupt. Political cor corruption. Of course it is. So why isn't anybody going after these these corporations for this? Well, they're... Um, is there, let me ask you, is there any chance you're wrong? No. No, this, sure. this is true. Then, then go they're, ahead. They're really not paying taxes and uh, there is... Um, right now they're, they're working on an amendment on a new amendment that would actually take money out of politics. I think it has to do with, um, like, if somebody gives to your campaign hundreds of millions of dollars, let's say, like, in other words, politicians should not be obligated to do special favors because someone... Well, it's kind of hard, but that's what they call lobbyists. And Lobby. they give you things, hey, listen, blah, 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 give you this, you do this. It's human nature to feel paid, you better pay back. Yeah. Right. Give something back in return for it. And sadly, that corrupts. That's corrupt. Money, money corrupts. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, and if you don't have the money, how do you, how do you campaign? How do you, how do you advertise what you're about? Unfortunately. I think we'd just be a strong candidate like this recent, uh, yeah. a week or so ago when, uh, who was it that was up? Oh, oh, my God, I, I'm black again. I'm sorry. You know, the, it was a big shock in the voting about a week or so ago. Voter voter fraud? Yeah, no, mean? no, a guy, the guy that beat, uh, oh, I just, I'm blank. I'm sorry. Uh, you know who I mean. I'm blank. But anyway, he got beaten by, he had he had millions of dollars, and this guy had only $300,000 in advertising revenue. I think by being a good person. Well, Jesse Ventura uh, had a, he ran on a low budget uh, campaign in Minnesota. Well, when they took his show up the air, because he was, he was uh, exposing too much. Yeah. It doesn't pay to be honest much anymore. You know, you know who took conspiracy you know? theory off? There's a station on cable called True TV. True TV. That was a great show, which originally was known as Court TV. Oh, really? That was Court TV. Yeah. And they uh, they they pulled it off. He was exposing too much. Now, of course, he's streaming on on internet. And he can say anything he wants. But he actually did a show recently about lobbyists. I have to watch it when he's I go a good home. Man, he's a smart man. He cares about people. Yeah. And it seems like everybody wants in politics wants to silence him for opening his mouth. You know he. 
just like they want to silence Edward Snowden. Yeah. And, and, and try and, and, and Well, let's be honest here too. They recently did a survey about a week or so ago on Ameri with Americans. Do you think he is a a patriot or a traitor? The vast majority said patriot. I agree. I agree. Well a whistleblower to me is a hero. Because you're telling the truth about it. They really how they're trying to screw us and the government tries to label yeah. you a traitor? No. No. Well, maybe watching your your thing here, what you're filming with me, they may hate me and you for what we're saying. But it's freedom of well, speech you know, and what's what's truly going on. Edward, is the, is the truth so bad to tell? No. Is it bad? Well, he took an oath. Edward Snowden took an oath to to up withhold withhold the con and uh, protect the Constitution. And that's what he's doing. And that's Look how they're doing. abusing it towards uh, the common man. Yeah. And when I say the common man, that includes includes women too. It's just the phrase common man. Yeah. That includes all sexes. Honest, you, honest humanity in honest general. People, the people. But he, yeah. uh, yeah. Because mankind obviously means women too. So let's be fair here, mm -hmm. okay? So don't get on me for that. <laughs> you know, being saying I'm sexist now because yeah. I didn't say women too. Uh, but um, yeah, it's uh, it, 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 it's, it's it's a rough situation where the corruption is is going running rampant, and um, they they're tampering with our constitutional rights. You know, they bend it to work their way. And why? Why do you want to do this? Hey, wh why is incarceration up like seven hundred percent, and they want to arrest everybody? Would it, you know, with a joint, with a well, marijuana no, no, possession. No, they want to release people to realize they realize well, grass possession is really nothing. It's marijuana, it's yeah. a plant, it's an herb, whatever. Well, they, well the, the, let's the, be honest the, the answer is, is, is simple. The, the prisons are privatized and they want, they want, they want free slave labor. Well, the bottom line, too, is let's be honest, they're guys serving 25 years in life or whatever for a couple of seeds in their car from the 70s. This is really right. wrong. Meanwhile, more severe Yeah, uh, and you wonder why cases. our prisons are overloaded? Because of stupidity such as this. Yeah. You know, you've got people in prison for... Worse offenses, do, I, doing less time. Let's be honest. If you remember years ago, they had the three strikes and you're out rule. Right. And a young black man down south, I think it was, was caught. He stole a slice of pizza. He was sent to prison for life because that was his third offense. And even the law got on it and said, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait a minute. We've got to change the law here. This guy, and even the pizza parlor owner said, I don't want to, he stole a slice of Maybe pizza. he was starving, I, maybe he was hungry. I don't, the pizza parlor owner said, I don't want to, this, I'll give him a whole pie. Don't arrest him for this. But the law said, no, three strikes and you're out. Letter of the law. Well, the law, well, I don't, you know I, how I feel. I don't like our legal system. It, it doesn't bend very often. It's got to learn to bend to make exceptions. At well, times. there's a lot of hip hypocrisy there, it too. Is money, money. Look at this this young kid down in, I think it was Texas months ago. Never got a day of prison. He got, I forget how many years of probation, and they called it affluenza because he was brought up wealthy affluent affluenza oh, I thought he you suffered from af, not influenza affluenza, affluenza affluent and he did serve he got and because he killed four people because he was drunk and ran I think he was 16 years old so he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth beyond his family owned the silver spoon company you want to tell me that's fair no first time you've they said they've ever heard that term in a, in a court affluenza he suffered from his parents were never there for him they just gave money blah 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 he suffered from being spoiled rotten, and he killed four people. Wow. Served not one day in jail. He got probation for a rent of money again, yeah. money again. Now, before before we close, let's, let's talk a little bit about that poor little, beautiful little girl who oh, was thrown out of, the, out of KFC. She was mauled by three pit bulls. Three. Three pit bull terriers. And uh, they were in a KFC, the family. Let's interrupt right first. Do not blame KFC for this. They were appalled. They had a fit when they had when this happened. They, you cannot blame the corporation for what employee stupidly or mistakenly does. 
So KFC is not a fault here. They immediately stepped in. Okay, but continue. But I want to know. No. no, KFC had nothing to do with this. Okay. It was a KFC employee. Yeah, and, and she she she, uh, she cried the whole way home. And, uh, oh, yeah. Now, the poor girl already feels self-conscious. You have to humiliate her she even wants more. She to come in for some mashed potatoes. And this employee, uh, they didn't say, even say if it was a manager, it was an employee. Uh, you have to leave. You're... You're offending some, your face is offending some oh customers. Oh my God. If I was there as a customer, I said, she's not going anywhere. I say, everything's on me. Sweetheart, you sit with me, you and your mom. Come Good. Yeah, of course. Why didn't anybody step up? Maybe it wasn't that crowd, and I don't know the whole story there. Bottom line, this is totally ridiculous. I mean, the poor girl feels self-conscious as it her? is. Did you see her? Yes. What a beautiful, you just want to squish her to pieces with love. You just want to hug her. She's an adorable little child. Right, and, uh, and I hope I hope the, and I hope those three pit bulls were put to sleep. No, I don't. I don't. I love animals. No. Yeah, but they no. they 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 no. maul to maul to no. to try to I kill know. a little girl. I mean, I can't see animals be. Nah. Got to you got to have. Uh, Who knows the background of my animals? Some, right? Were they being beaten and mis abused by their owner too? Or yeah, but what if they do it again? I know, I know, but maybe give them different homes or better homes. Or what about restitution for the damage they did? Well, know? that's probably in civil court. That would go to civil court, yeah. I'm sure. But this little girl is adorable. Yeah. Sweet little thing. Just how, a shame. How could any anybody say that yeah. to her? She wanted. She want, You know why she wanted mashed potatoes? Because her jaw and everything hurt so bad she couldn't chew much. She needed something soft. Oh. She wanted mashed potato. And they ask you to leave because your face is offending some customers. Number two, I wonder if it was really offending anybody. Or was it just this individual employee that said that? That's another reflection on humanity. <coughs> About people care... You know, if when, when push comes to shove, do they really care about other people? I would bet you 99% of people would say she stays. Oh, absolutely. I agree. This is a super, super mini minority that would ask her to leave. I bet it was the manager or one of the supervisors that just did not want her in there. Well, like I said, do not blame... K I want to make sure this is up. Do not blame KFC for this. Right. They stepped right up to the plate. They had a fit. Let's be honest, you're a corporation, but you, if within seconds or me, you can't be responsible for everything that happens in all your thousands of stores. So what does that mean? If somebody ugly comes in, oh, you have to leave or... You're somebody, too fat, you don't really need a big bucket. Yeah, leave. You know? Or, 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 or what if somebody racist tells yeah. somebody to leave? Yeah. Where does it end? Where does it end? So, That's the uh, point. Where does this, this end? This was totally, totally wrong. Yeah. If you the let little it girl is adorable. They're worried that she has to carry, the, number one, the, the dogs. Number two, this abuse by this stupid human. I think what her parents and everyone around her should let her know is, this is good. Look at the support you have. The world loves you. You're a beautiful little child. This was only, darling, this was only one person. This doesn't speak for everyone. Yeah. Everybody loves you. Everybody. So they've got to instill that in her mind. You know, and I you wouldn't know? be surprised if if people, somebody created a, a fundraising uh, uh, well, well, program I mean, KFC to did, raise money. The for same her. day KFC did, did establish a thirty thousand dollar plus charity. I think it was in her name. I mean, for surgery for for. No, I don't know if it was for her or for charity in her name or what. It was thirty thousand yeah. dollars or something. Well, for her medical for her medical bills. something. Or medical. I'm sure she's going to need plastic surgery. Well, I'm sure KFC will step up to the plate as well. Yes. They're, they're a good, honorable organization, corporation, what have you. Yes. And uh, they were appalled. They were shocked as we are. Yeah. So don't blame KFC for this, please. Yeah. Make sure you know, everybody's going to say, oh, that stupid KFC. No, they had nothing to do with it. This was just a dumb employee. Right. And things will happen within an organization when you're dealing with thousands yeah. of employees. You can't, you can't. Uh, demonize an entire organization no. for the actions of one idiot. No. KFC, I'm sure, did not say anybody comes over the scarred face, get them out. Yeah. You know they didn't do that. That's you like know that. that's like saying all cops are bad. Are are guilty of or have a potential for pre police brutality. No, all no, cops. We always remember the minority, the bad. Yeah. You know. 
you see a few bad, for those few bad, it's probably 90 some odd percent that are good. You can't judge an entire group or yeah. what have you, or a race or anything in life by it. Yeah. The small minority percentage. Yeah. Or a corrupt, a corrupt police officer. It doesn't officer mean they're or, all bad. Yeah. You know how many cops I know that are phenomenal? I've got a lot of police friends. I've got a lot of firemen friends. They're right. wonderful. I've got a lot of friends in the military. They are wonderful. And once in a while, something slips through the cracks. But so, you, uh, you, get a, you get a bad apple. Yeah, you do. You yeah, do. sorry and, about that. Uh, no, I'm sorry, but so, you know, things happen. Remember that. Things happen. We are human. Or shit happens too. Are, are, are all humans fallible? Yes. That's the best way to put it. All humans are fallible. Sometimes they, these bad ones slip through the cracks and they do things. And I'm sure when it's brought to light and when they have time to think, they hate what they did too as well. Oh, okay. Hold on. Yeah, what were you saying about uh, Super Tech? You're going to make I a just think, I, I just think my belief system and what, when I was building Super Tech, before I got screwed by my partners, which is why it never got finished, I always had the respect of people on the highest levels of business and or government. Because of my attitude, my treatment of others, I had respect. Not to brag, it sounds braggish, I'm not trying to be. But I'm, I'm a very good person. You've known me almost 40 years. When I had to deal with R&B and rap groups, they wanted to leave the record label. When I had my partner at the time come in, and we've got a problem. So what? He was, they will only deal with you. They said, we'll only talk to Billy. It's respect. How do you get respect? By treating people well and fairly. I was raised well. My father was phenomenal. Uh, I don't mistreat anybody. I'm, I'm out of my way for anybody and everybody. It comes down to how you treat people as a human being. Well, you were extremely fair employer. Oh, beyond fair. Beyond fair. Very fair. You, you I never, I've never fired anybody. In the jobs I had in the past, I was told to fire people. You, you always looked at both sides. You always listened to both sides. Always, always. And reasons to keep them. I've never fired anyone. I was told to fire people, and I didn't blink an eye. Maybe a split second, I said, no. And I told my boss, and they said, what? I said, we're going to talk about this. And I sat down and explained it to them why. He said, you're right, you're right. Well, if you're, if you're, if you're quick to fire somebody with a lot of experience... It's easy to crack the whip, Jim. Well, yeah. You're given power, okay? You don't so forget. You use your power. But don't forget, for, by firing somebody with a lot of experience and who's a, who's outstanding employee and yeah who, and this will all great with the other employees which means you're important right. to the group as a team effort right so but when you when you lose somebody like that you have to find a new one to replace them and retrain them all over again it's not always replaceable it's not the same sometimes you can't replace it's not the same thing no you know, so but anyway, it was uh, as always. This it was has got to continue. We're running out of time before now. Let's tell everybody, all right. Next time, we'll talk to you some more. Bye bye. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to newsletter censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we're back. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III, for a great um, first day of summer uh, program show, and uh, of course, uh, followed by promo. He did a great job on promo. Um, I just want to remind you people before I forget, regardless what you hear, especially you, you uh, 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 brain cell deficient boobs out in the red states. Oxytocin too. That watch Fox News mistakenly. 
There is no trickle-down economics in America. It never was. There is siphon up to the rich, to the 1% or the top 10%. Siphon up economics. Never trickle down. Only pistol down. Dickle down. Siphon up. It's a siphon. Ah, me siphon. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Okay, now we will sink our teeth right. back into these readings. No one ever said that the death of a cat is more important than that of a person. However, Patterson, New Jersey residents at the candlelight vigil to protest the presence and actions of the animal rights activists persisted in sharing that misinterpreted belief. People who are tortured and beaten to death have other people who care, who speak out about the horrible crime, and who demand justice. Who was going to be that voice for Quattro the cat. The racist online comments made by some mindless and ignorant individuals are not worth addressing. And that is what the people of Patterson should have done. Instead, they used those comments to turn Quattro's death into a racial issue. Nah, they're always playing the race card. Sadly, it really didn't matter where Quattro lived or what color the children were who brutally tortured him. What matters is what they allegedly did to him. Listen, sadism in, in with sociopathic children or, or adults comes in all colors in um, races, nationalities. What would possess children to behave in such a way? I wasn't like that. What would have happened if the two boys had not intervened? Would the other kids just try to continue to beat Quattro until he was finally dead in front of their eyes? Pulverized. They would have pulverized Quattro. Was that their goal? And, and why? So, it is frightening to think that children would do such harm to an innocent animal. Wait till they grow up. <laughs> Who is really to blame for Quattro's death? Is it the children themselves or their parents? The schools, the environment, or the community? Where were they all when Quattro was being tortured? That's true. That's true. Any any animal, any creature that um, shows emotion, Has some intelligence, you know. I'm not talking about an invertebrate. I'm talking about creatures with, with some that show that look you in the eye and bond with you and show affection and things like that. Um, <clears throat> have should be protected. Should have rights protecting them from some of these sadistic, evil uh, people. That, kids. These bullies. These kids. Uh, these kids and adults that. Uh, mistreat, abuse, starve, dogs and cats, horses, whatever, you know, any, any pet, any, any, uh, any animal, even uh, cruel and inhumane ways of keeping livestock, you know, like, like veal, which I think or a pigs. lot of, I think a lot of people refuse to eat, I refuse to eat. I don't eat, eat, eat veal. No, why? It's like it's just cruel, you know. Pigs. I, I've seen videos of how they cram 
livestock in, in, into such such small quarters, and they have no life at all. It, it could be ducks, it could be pigs, it doesn't matter. Chickens. I haven't had a veal patties they, yeah. with breadcrumb on them. They usually call them veal steaks. Veal scallopini or no, 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 uh, just veal steaks like hamburgers in a box, six to a box. Well, veal cutlet is um, uh, Wiener Schnitzel. German, I haven't had one since the 1960s. I have no interest in it, you know. I mean, uh, and then the uh, baby roosters, chicks that are male, they 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 throw them in a dumpster and they, mm. they kill them. All these, all those foghorn leghorns, instead of putting them up for adoption, you know. Speaking and continuing with the animal themes. Residents in a southern Chinese city that has come under fire for an animal summer solstice festival in which thousands of dogs are slaughtered for food have held their feasts early to avoid attention. Sick. Some <sighs> residents of Yulin Y-U-L-I-N started gathering last weekend and eating dog meat and lychees to celebrate the longest day of the year ahead of Saturday's actual solstice. A lychee is a very sweet, delicious tropical fruit, by the way. The residents wanted to avoid protests by animal rights activists. In recent years, the festival has been targeted by activists who have drummed up public awareness of the event with posts on social media and online petitions and descended on the city to protest outside slaughterhouses or markets where the dogs are sold. How do you how do you look these poor souls, these animals in the eye and and, 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 and kill them? How, how do you, do you do stuff it? them into a stinking cage when they're still alive? Yeah. Crammed into a Crammed cage. Crammed into a cage. How do you how do you bush butcher cute, innocent, intelligent dolphins up in Japan in that in that to prove little, your manhood. In that cove that they congregate yeah. once a year. And the, and this is they do it every year and they're they're doing it. That that's the point. They're doing it. They're doing it. The Continuously. Public, yeah. The public uproar reflects the increasing affluence of ordinary Chinese who keep pets, travel overseas, and are changing attitudes toward traditions they may not have questioned before. Because they see more in a cat or a dog than what these sadists see in them. Under the Yulin tradition, eating dog and lychee and drinking liquor on the solstice is supposed to make people stay healthy during the winter. Not the dogs, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. Oh, me lord, me lord! Unbelievable. Sad. Very sad. But there are many cases of cruelty to animals in the United States. Yeah, you know? yeah. And and to the poor. <laughs> uh, to Timothy, without natural affection, the world shall become. Was that involving the world or just the U.S.? The world. The Bible is speaking of the world, not just the United States. The United States is only one of the twelve tribes. Of ancient history, of modern day descendants. Ephraim or Manasseh? What okay. You, which one do you think is the U.S.? Not think. Which one? It's a matter of Manasseh. Manasseh you don't is think US. this thing. You know this. Yeah, Ephraim was would be Great Britain. Two of Joseph's sons. Where, yes. where Ephraim the, where, and Manasseh. Where David's throne is is located right now, London, England. You and, sure it's in England? And the Rothschilds. You sure it's in England? The infamous Rothschild. I don't know. What do you think it is? Davis Throne. I don't know. It might have been. In, they might have moved it to Scotland, but I think it's in England. I think it's in England. But she has a. Uh, 
Does she have a castle in uh, Scotland? Yeah. Too. Well, I know they the, move around in or I, something. I know the infamous uh, New World Order of the of the Rothschilds are in are in, in London. Not a New World Order, but a World Order. They, they go, They're just plutocrats. They go back. Yeah. Yes. They want their way. That's what they were. That's all they are. It's not a New World Order. Or any of those conspiracy crap theories. Do you? Did you? These are greedy people who want their way. Did you see the? They uh, have the money and power to do it. The video about uh, the District of Columbia yes, was set up by the corporation, corporation of the District of Columbia. Yeah. And the Rothschilds were involved in that. Well, of course. How do you think? How do you think the United States gets its money? They just print it. <laughs> no, the United States doesn't print. It anything. used to be based on gold, right? No. The United States has the power, under the Constitution, to print its own money, but it does not. It borrows it from private banks. Lovely. Okay? Lovely. And we pay out hundreds of billions of dollars a year in interest payments, making the private sector rich. Because remember, when you give your money to someone, you are making them richer than you. Just like if you if you work for chicken feed for an American company, you are helping them Become get richer, rich. and you poor most likely will be poor because the cost of living is way beyond what you make. That's correct. Way beyond, and then uh, it, it's real. It's like you've heard of the term uh, a dead end job well you have a dead-end life uh -huh. if you happen to be uh, poor or lower middle class middle class or whatever yeah you know uh, hey. a, an upper middle class person could get laid off and lose everything too since then, back in the 1940s and 50s and 60s half of the 70s by laws we we made the middle class richer in this country and then the law started changing and to siphon the moolah upward. What's the freaking siphon? Come over here. Siphon the moolah upward. Yeah. Upward. And on all the, go the benefits of government and etc. were given to the private sector. Now the poor is being driven into the poor. I'm sorry. The middle class is being driven into the poorhouse now. And they have made in some areas poverty so make a, good crop. a crime yeah. where you can go to the poorhouse if you cannot pay your debts. Oh, yeah. Coming to America. Debtors' prisons? That's right. Well, that's more slave labor for corporations. You know, aside from arresting you for marijuana. Hey, if their, pri if their wages are so far down and everything, they can't get people to work for them, that's the only way they're going to get the labor. And um, and legalizing marijuana, I have a sneaky feeling it's tied into Monsanto's GMO marijuana coming from South America. And they'll get in on there, believe me. Because they'll pay off them politicians. Siphon up. Remember, there is no trickle down. You hear that, you you you, you stupid red state tea party, I mean tea baggers. There is no trickle down. Do not believe what you hear on Fox News. Better yet, don't watch it. <laughs> I think um, some comedian was uh, hollering lately about MSNBC uh -huh. involving the Washington Redskins. I think he was. I have a feeling he is. Uh, yes, the court said that he's they, pro keeping it. The Redskins. Well, the court said no. They got to change it. Yeah. Well, when you think okay. about it, the term Redskins is a racist derogatory. That's correct. It's not nice. It's not a a nice term. Mm -hmm. You know, to use. I mean, uh, can, can, continuing with the animal theme. Yes. It was the moment that humanity learned we had the awesome power to erase an entire species 
off the face of the earth in the scientific equivalent of a blink of an eye. What a shame, all the animals that became extinct because of man. The passenger pigeon went from billions of birds to extinct. Wow. Before our very eyes. Did they kill them for squab, for meat? It was one bird's death after, a, after another. But a century ago, Martha, a red-eyed gray and brown bird, famous as the last surviving passenger pigeon, keeled over, marking an extinction that shook science and the public. There was no um, uh, male passenger pigeon in her possession, so she could get some eggs going? I guess not. Why now, did they perish? Now, a century later, Martha's back. What? In a way. She is being taken out of the file cabinets of history. Cloned? In a new Smithsonian Institution exhibit this month. Get her bow marrow and clone the damn passenger pigeon, including all the other extinct animals, Smithsonian. Reminding the public of her death and of other species that have gone extinct because of man. The Tasmanian tiger, the um, the dodo bird. Even though we have, they're all in Washington, the Capitol building now. <laughs> <laughs> A new scientific study this week shows how pigeon populations fluctuated wildly but how people ultimately killed off the species. And some geneticists are even working on the long shot hope of reviving the passenger pigeon from leftover DNA in stuffed birds. There you go, I was just saying that. And then you talk to morons like uh, Rush Limbaugh where they'll, they say, ah, oh, so why the dolphins get caught in a fish net or uh, Whale hunting's going on. They're 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 really it's they, li it's liberals who say whales and dolphins are intelligent creatures. They're real and more important than humans. They're really stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More important than and uh, of course you know according to Rush, profit is above everything. More important than quattro the cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here was a bird like the robin that everybody knew, and within a generation or two it was gone. In the 18th and 19th centuries, the passenger pigeon was the most abundant bird species on the earth. How about that? Wow. In 1866, in Ontario, just one flock of billions of birds, 300 miles long and one mile wide, darkened the skies for 14 hours as they flew by now, overhead. Now how the hell did this many pigeons eventually become zero pigeons? It's amazing. Incredible. Unlike the domesticated carrier pigeon used for messages, these were wild birds. Yeah, like wild doves. They're wild there. They were easy to catch because they stayed together. They were considered a poor man's food. There you go. The greed of the food industry. Domestic workers complained about eating too much passenger pigeon. Listen. Nobody ever dreamed that a bird that common could be brought into extinction that quickly. That's how the dodo bird became extinct. They were they were easy to catch and they ate them, killed them. They just kept on doing it. Commercial fishermen, some of them have that attitude. Yeah, cod. Just keep on fishing them. Fish, fish, fish. Drill, drill, drill. That's that's a, a conservative way of thinking. And then you have nothing, stupid asses. Then nothing is left. Well, yeah, they don't, you cut down a tree, you got to replace it. Yeah. Yeah, that too. Trees, rainforest. Yeah, Johnny Appleseed. You know, if, if there's certain woods in the rainforest that bring that much money, and start an orchard of that wood, uh, uh, a sustainable, sustainable industry, sustainable uh, hardwoods. I believe that happened with the cedars of Lebanon. 
that are mentioned in the Bible. Well, the, my drum, my my Jembe drum, my African drum is made from mahogany and goatskin, and the mahogany is from sustainable source. There you go. Which means you're not you're not taking from the rainforest. You're not, and, mm -hmm. and that's the way it should be. You know, uh, if it, harvest it from an orchard, like like the lumber industry. Don't don't they plant the pine trees? Some of them do, but other ones they just 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 like the mine industry, where they cut off the tops of mountains. Well, that destroys yes. America, America, the beauty of America's yes. landscapes. Yes. You're taking but away. But they don't care. They're making profit. You're taking away from uh, taking away the beauty that that. Our our children, children, grandchildren, great grandchildren will be able to view <laughs> national parks. Oh yeah, they'd love to go in there and drill, 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 and cut, cut, cut. Take the tops off of mountains so the fat cats can get richer, and 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 the um, the quality of life for the mainstream go, goes down. Hey. We, and don't then have a, we don't have a right to water. And then climate change. We don't have a right to uh, oil. We don't have a right to land. We don't have a right to anything. A tree is very okay. important. A tree has many, many benefits to the, the planet. So it should be replaced. And, it, and, there, and actually, uh, in urban areas and suburban areas, they are, they seem to be planting a lot of young saplings everywhere. And maybe they're replacing the ones that are infested. Well, I mean, I mean, people still know that they they still care and they still know the benefits okay. of trees. You know, and and and, and Hopefully, vegetation. Hopefully, because every desert that is in the world was once a flourishing, verdant piece of real estate. Tree roots hold moisture in uh -huh. the ground, uh -huh. prevent erosion, uh -huh. create oxygen, and uh -huh. take in carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide, isn't that the culprit that contributes to global warming? And some jumbaloni in the Congress the other day too, yeah. said that CO2 is plant food. Bullshit. You know what I mean? Because the plants take in the CO2 and may create oxygen. Well, if you keep on destroying the friggin' forest, the thing up there, the ozone layer. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Examination of the passenger pigeon's genetic code shows that their population ping-ponged regularly from as much as five billion to as few as tens of millions. Said a study co-written by Zinc in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Still, the chief causes of the extinction, cutting down eastern U.S. forests and hunting, were man-made. Passenger pigeons always reached lows like this. It's just. This time, their luck ran out because we were around. By 1900, there were no passenger pigeons left in the wild. By 1914, there was just 29-year-old Martha in the Cincinnati Zoo. Are you, are you okay? Oh yeah, Martha's I'm, the last I'm one. I'm having an oxytocin moment for the pigeon. Yeah, it's pretty it's sad. Not empathy. It's pretty sad when there's when there's one left. I I saw the uh, before he he died. I saw the last of the Mohicans. The no, the last of a particular species of Galapagos tortoise Oy. that only existed on one Galapagos island, and it was down to one. And it was a male, and they couldn't find a female. And eventually, he died of very, very old age, as tortoises do. And that's it. He became extinct. 
I'm not sure what it was because I couldn't see it properly or whatever. Could they clone him? Couldn't they take his DNA? Yes, 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 yes. Why aren't but they doing it? They got other priorities. So it's not important to a lot of people that a species becomes extinct. People lined up to see her. She was the star. Then, on September the 1st, 1914, oh boy. Martha was found lying on the bottom of her cage. The passenger pigeon was now extinct. Wow. That long ago, too. It had gone from billions of birds to zero in one century. It was the first public extinction Something people used to think happened only to relics of the past, such as dinosaurs or critters stuck on islands, such as dodos. This was a real wake-up call for the public, and frankly for scientists too. Ornithologists studied birds and they didn't really think of species becoming extinct. But they did. And Martha, the last of her kind, was put in a 300-pound block of ice and shipped to Washington. For the past 15 years, she has been in a drab metal filing cabinet in the bowels of the Smithsonian, where she will reemerge on Tuesday in an exhibit on her extinction 100 years ago. Too bad they didn't have um, um, acrylic, you know, uh, to, to seal her airtight in, in an acrylic block. That w that's a great way to preserve uh, Martha. The yeah. best thing is to try to revive her using her DNA. Well, you can't revive her, you have to put the DNA in something else to create a second Martha. In other words, the closest relative. Like the elephant and the, uh, the mammoth. mammoth. They, they use the Asian, the female, female Asian elephant to try to bring back the mammoth and then you, you take the, the young and you start doing it again and again and again until you have a hundred percent mammoth. Did you see that uh, woolly mammoth picture the other day on Facebook where the train hit the elephant? Yeah. Man. And I saw a picture of um, an elephant that was decapitated. His face was decapitated just to harvest the tusks, the tusks by poachers. Tusks the article said tusks are for elephants, not for profit, something like that. Under pressure from Congress, North Jersey celebrity Dr. Mehmet Oz yeah. on Tuesday offered to help drain the swamp of unscrupulous marketers using his name to peddle so-called miracle pills and cure-alls to millions of Americans desperate to lose weight. And he had nothing to do with any of these companies? That's what he says. That's what he says. And also the woman that was uh, prosecuting him, uh, she had, she received uh, some hefty contributions from uh, questionable sources uh, involved here. Dr. Oz appeared before the Senate's Consumer Protection Panel and was scolded by Chairwoman Claire McCaskill. That's her. For claims he made about weight loss aids on his television show. Dr. Oz, a cardio. Wait a minute. A cardio thoracic surgeon at New York or Presbyterian Hospital, lives in Cliffside Park, New Jersey. I was just there yesterday by Mario's. Is that a pizza joint? Cliffside Park? No, no, Mario's. Mario's. A, Mario's a friend oh, of mine, Petrus. a personal trainer. 
Yeah, he's well, well, he's not in Cliffside anymore. He's from Cliffside. Okay. I'm sorry. He acknowledged that the language about green coffee and other supplements has been flowery and promised to publish a list of specific products he thinks can help America shed pounds and get healthy beyond eating less and moving more. On his show, he never endorsed specific companies or brands, but more generally praised some health supplements as fat busters. McCaskill took Oz to task for 2012 show in which he proclaimed that green coffee bean <laughs> extracts was a magic weight loss cure for every body type. Every body type. I've seen uh, many articles on green coffee. Uh, it's not. It's not bullshit. It's just that you can't call it a miracle, <laughs> magical product. You know, and you can't have anything to do with it. Right, because if you because if you're being paid to promote it, yeah. there's a problem there. Conflict of uh, interest. Yeah. I get that you do a lot of good on your show. McCaskill told Oz, but I don't get why you need to say this stuff because you know it's not true. Oz insisted he believes in the supplements he talks about on his show well, as so short-term crutches. And even his ha family has tried that. Dieting, the, well, there is no one pill uh, panacea. Uh, uh, dieting involves a whole lifestyle change, which, which many other uh, health issues are are uh, are, um, are, 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 are are involved. Are dealt with yeah. the right way to deal with it, the right way to to uh, the right protocol. It, it's it's not just one factor. He said his job on the show is to be a cheerleader for his audience one who offers hope, even if that means looking to alternative healing traditions and any evidence that might support them. But Oz did agree that there's no long-term miracle pill. And that includes pharmaceuticals. Definitely within, not pharmaceuticals. Within weeks of Oz's comments about green coffee, which, which, which refers to the unroasted seeds or beans of coffee, a Florida-based operation began marketing a dietary supplement called Pure Green Coffee with claims that the chlorogenic acid found in the beans could help people lose 17 pounds and cut body fat by 16% in 22 weeks. If you work with the supplements and change your eating habits and stick to it. Well, losing 17 pounds in 22 weeks is very slow. Yeah. Because on the Atkins diet, you may lose two pounds a week. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But it's the food. The food, the, the, the eating uh, habits of a person comes first. It's, it's your dietary program and then supplements come later to enhance, but uh, it, it's all in the diet. And, and, and uh, this woman, I'm, look, I'm sure because it's a, a natural, unpatented substance and not a drug from a pharmaceutical country, uh, company, that, I think this is the reason why McCaskill was trying to crucify him. But he should have stood up to her and said, if I was bragging about a drug, you wouldn't be having me here right now. The company, according to federal regulators, featured footage from the Dr. Oz show to sell its supplement. Oz has no association with the company and received no money from sales. Last month, the Federal Trade Commission sued the sellers behind Pure Green Coffee, accused them of making bogus claims and deceiving consumers. Oh, heaven forbid they should do that to drugs. 
they have a long list of negative side effects and have and have sent people to the hospital or to their grave. Yeah, 65,000 with the Vioxx. Right, all Before that. Before they finally took it off the ma ma market. Yeah, I mean, but they'll go after green coffee beans? <laughs> the weight loss industry is an area where consumers are particularly vulnerable to fraud. Right. Mary Cobell Eagle in Engel, associate director at the FTC, testified at the Senate hearing. She said the agency conducted a consumer survey in 2011 and found that more consumers were victims of fraudulent weight loss products than any of the other specific frauds covered in the survey. Dr. Oz stressed during the hearing that he has never endorsed specific health supplements or received money from the sale of supplements, nor has he allowed his image to be used in ads for supplements. I am innocent. Well, it's got to be proven. It's got to be proven that uh, he is really uh, being paid by these companies. You know, it's uh, can't just assume it. You know, but there's a good chance that uh, it can go either way. You know, it's just too early to tell. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody like Dr. Oz um, was taking was was paid was taking the paid, bribe was paid to endorse. I mean, yes. look, look at some of these doctors that uh, they won't take uh, Obamacare. They won't take the health insurance with Obamacare because it's connected to Medicaid. Because they, they got to get top dollar in the United States health care system. It's very funny that that is exactly what we are going to discuss now. You know, we must have, a, we must have a psychic connection. Because every time I make a statement, it just happens to be the reading, the next reading that Dr. Bill has. How about that? Despite having the costliest health care system, the United States ranks last among 11 industrialized countries on health care quality and access, according to a new report. Take that, Rush Limbaugh. U.S. healthcare ranked less. Yeah. That's correct. The analysis by the Commonwealth Fund, published on Monday, ranked the United Kingdom first overall. Even though its per capita health spending is less than half of that of the United States. The other top ranked countries were Switzerland, and Sweden, France, and Canada were just above the United States at the bottom of the rankings. Researchers said the United States was hurt by a lack of access to primary care and inefficiencies in the healthcare system overall. They said provisions in the Affordable Care Act may help boost the country's standing. It is disappointing, but not surprising, that despite our significant investment in health care, the United States has continued to lag behind other countries. It doesn't surprise me. The United States spent $8,508 per person on health care in 2011, compared with 3406 in the United Kingdom. Americans also experienced financial barriers. More than a third of adults in the United States reported skipping a recommended test or treatment because of cost. That is true. Neglecting their health because of, of cost. So what good is health care if you can't afford it? 
what good is health care if uh, there are exceptions in the policy where they will not cover it and you may need it uh -huh. then why is it called health care health care it means to care for those that are not healthy that have an affliction that are sick well if you deny somebody certain treatments as an insurance company because you don't feel like paying the high cost of the treatment which shouldn't be high cost anyway because uh, the medical profession healthcare is, is supposed to be a right not a privilege it's also not supposed to be a business right exactly that's the problem exactly it's like education it's like education of course the republicans do not want to uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, remove the uh, the high interest of student loans right because they do not want an educated public an educated public is trouble they want to privatize education in the United States, so only the rich kids will, That's correct. will get an education. Only those with the money will be able to do that, like it was in the old days. Because if you have a nation of super smart people, then they would be too smart to vote for a Republican. And to work for a seven twenty-five an hour. Yeah, okay. or less like those poor souls in the food service industry, waiters and waitresses and NFL cheerleaders that are working two dollars and change an hour, two dollars and change an hour. Right. And then, the, like I told Billy Morrow, the restaurant owner, if he insists on his servers pooling their tips, he can very easily skim the top Ooh. and steal like Mario Batali was stealing from his wine servers in his restaurant and he got caught. Mm -hmm. How much more money does a rich famous person have to have to be content? Well you gotta steal from poor souls trying to live week to week, trying to survive on their gratuities beyond me. You know what the Bible says about money from the backs of others? No, no. Bible says the Bible has a lot of no-nos that are happening today mm -hmm. because of the right wingers. Yeah, the ones who use God as a front man. Yeah, the ones that claim that they're closer to God than a secular humanist uh, liberals. Mm -hmm. You know, they they got the liberals so guilty being by being demonized as liberals that they have to call themselves progressives. Yeah. Yeah. You figure. Guilty. It's very easy to lay a, a guilt trip on a, a liberal, a progressive. Unfortunately, these those are the ones that walk on eggshells because they're so afraid of offending someone. You know, so... Um, I want to be loved. You please, must love me. Please love me. Please uh, do not ostracize me. Can we pray. work together? Can we all get Bipartisan? along? Bipartisanship. Bipartisanship. Compromise, bipartisan. Compromise. You know how many times Barack Obama and and uh, Nancy Pelosi said the word bipartisanship and compromising, like it was an obsession. Hey, look, when when they voted, when the U.S. citizens voted in Barack Obama instead of uh, J John McCain and Sarah Palin, they didn't vote to compromise with Republicans. They voted for a big change. They voted for change. That was part of the campaign, wasn't it? Not to compromise. Change. You can believe it. You can believe it. Well, we didn't get no change, did we? No. You got all the people hired from Wall Street. You got all the people uh, hired from, uh, like, uh, for, for the EPA. Yeah. Someone who is a polluter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Paluca? There was no change. Polluter. Yeah, well, There I, wasn't no Joe Paluca. Now, that guy... That guy uh, he didn't. He didn't care for the, uh, the statement I made. The right, right wing troll. I, I sent you the, the conversation from Facebook. He didn't care for the comment about uh, that. The fact that the Democrats did have control of the House and Senate when Obama first took office for the first two years, mm -hmm. and we did not see a shift of the tax burden back on the rich. We did not see the single payer uh, universal health care system. We could have seen it. They had two years to do it. 
but we didn't see it. We could have seen regulations going back on onto corporations. Glass-Steagall put back? We could have seen the Glass-Steagall Act put back in those two years. But we, we didn't see, see it. We didn't see anything. So what does that mean? It means that people like Jesse Ventura, Gary Null, and others like them are right. The two-party system is corrupt. They're all corporatists. Two sides of the same <laughs> coin. They're not for we the people. They are no. corporatists. Corporatists. And it was Bill Clinton that, that put in Glass-Steagall, right? Took it out. Signed I mean, law. took it out. I'm sorry. Took it, it out. It was the Congress. Bill Clinton can do nothing on his own. Well, Barack, but sign a bill. Barack Obama is at the mercy of the Congress, That's too. That's correct. Congress makes the laws. They give it to the Presidente, and he signs it. Or he vetoes it. And if he vetoes them, and they have enough uh, Republicans in the Senate and Congress, they will override this veto, right. veto well, and get the law that they want. Well, Obama should have vetoed the, uh, should have said no to the Monsanto Protection Act. Of course. What about the NS NDA, uh, whatever, the National mm -hmm. Defense Authorization mm -hmm. Bill, which allows us, uh, which makes us all terrorists if we protest. If you protest. Yeah. And, and protesting was always tied into the First Amendment, right? Yes, it was until J. Edgar Hoover could not tell the difference between a whistleblower and a terrorist. Whistle, or a protest. Whistleblowers, and a terrorist. which are patriotic heroes. Uh, it just ma it makes me think of, uh, of uh, Secretary of State uh, uh, John. Um, John Kerry? John Kerry saying that Edward Snowden should come back come to the U.S. and, and, and get the, thrown in face prison. Face the music. Face the music. And he's a de he's Democrat, John Kerry. That's correct. Democrat. He's not even, uh, it's not even uh, uh, a Republican saying this. It's John Kerry saying this. But it is the government, which is now made up of them, the corporatists, yeah. against us. Right. So that's why he says well, that. Edward Snowden just uh, was withholding his oath that he took when when he got took the job to the Constitution. Right? Uh, he's 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 honoring his oath that he took by blowing the whistle. Mm -hmm. right? But you see, those people in charge don't want those whistles blown, and they want you to remain ignorant, like the people in the red state. Like that Wolf County in Kentucky, where the people are on Social Security, Medicaid, or whatever the hell it is, they're poor. But they vote for Republicans because they would never do anything wrong for oh, us. Sure, sure. Like their lives are improving with the Republicans in charge. That's how you, you have to uh, look at things. It's like, who is really in well, charge? Well, not if they keep blaming the Democrats for every bad thing. Because they believe that everything's Obama's fault, because they're a bunch of red state racists. Exactly. They don't look so at the fact that that, uh, that Obama inherited the mess from Bush and Cheney, and now we have a Republican Congress that's creating all the evil, and they still blame Obama because the the racists in the in, in, on Fox News and Republican Party are blaming Obama for everything, everything, you name it. Mm -hmm. Uh, blaming him for things that uh, 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 happened before he took office. <laughs> right, correct. Yeah. Uh, it's you all know. Obama's fault. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, we, know, we know what they're about, Republicans. They just want to get the black man out of the White House. Well, that's it. We got two more years. No, oh, he's, he's here. Got six years in there already. His term is, you know. His term is locked in, just like unfortunately Chris Christie's term is locked in, unless the prosecutor puts Chris Christie on the barbecue with the apple in his mouth. And then we can roast. impeach him. Huh? And then they can impeach him. They can impeach him, they can in, in, in mango him, papaya him, whatever fruit you want to use. They got, the best thing that can happen is to see him on a rotisserie from the prosecutor. Anyway, that's it. Oh, God. Thank you for joining us 
for this week's uh, uncensored uh, hard-hitting truth we'll see you next time uh, this is of course our special first day of summer show take care have a safe weekend say so long to these jabronis so long jammies jammies what yeah i changed i, I changed it oh, okay jambalonis jambalonis this has been a Megalife 21 production.